Hi, all you SPMEs out there. Today's video has three points, and you're going to want to stick around because the third point is a secret as to the absolute top strategy when it comes to using pen names. So let's get into it. Perhaps you are an author who you've got your first book, but now you're trying to decide, do you use your own name on your book? Or instead, do you use a pen name? That is a name that you've chosen so that people maybe wouldn't be able to identify this book with you personally. Or maybe you've written several books and are looking at for a next set of books to use pen names on those. And you're wondering, maybe that's a good strategy for you. The problem is that you're thinking, well, if because if you put your own name on it and your writing is terrible, then you're going to get judged for it. This is one common reason many authors don't put their pen names they don't use pen names and they or they do use pen names instead of their own name or you're coming out with books in all sorts of genres and maybe some of them are controversial there's a whole series of genres that are a bit controversial it could be giving financial advice it could be uh, on different health issues that would be a little bit controversial or perhaps you're doing it on substances uh, that are that are no that are not legal everywhere uh, that has become a popular niche on Amazon or maybe it's romance novels and things like that so for different people different books will be controversial and so you may Maybe you wish to use a pen name for that. And that's, you know, a completely acceptable reason to go about using a pen name. But there are a number of things you're definitely going to want to keep in mind. And there's no need to get super excited or anxious about this problem of using a pen name. And we're going to get into that because today's video is on pen names for authors, pros and cons. So let's get into it. This is Chris Baird from selfpublishingmadeeasynow.com where self-publishing doesn't have to be so hard. Hit the subscribe button if you would like for you to make more videos like this that's the number one way you're going to tell me you need you would like to see more videos because it helps me find new authors who have never been exposed to the best strategies when it comes to kdp and the easy way of getting your books self-published as opposed to doing it the difficult way that so many self-publishing gurus are continually trying to tell you and check out below my checklist here it's a free checklist on secrets of self-publishing to help you make sure you're not skipping any of the key steps uh, to self-publishing. So let's get started. When I first started self-publishing, I did it under a number of niches. Now you might be wondering why I did this at the same time. Well, the thing was, I figured I'd started with initial niche, which was achieving your goals. And I thought, well, this is an exciting niche. It's something I'm interested in. I thought I want to jump into the world of Kindle publishing, but I didn't know how to go about doing it. So I chose the niche of that. And then I thought, well, okay, I've done that. Now what do I do? Well, maybe I could do one on habits and then maybe one on sleep. There's a number of things I find on the productivity side, which I am very much interested in that a lot of ideas but there's a huge problem here. It's because I was jumping from niche to niche. That is different areas on Amazon are broken down into like health and fitness and beauty and other things. And then you would have maybe productivity would be one of them. And you might have some of them that are based on food and culinary and the arts and all sorts of niches or categories that we find there. And then sub niches and sub categories for each of these. And so what happened was I was writing books in all sorts of categories. Just choose a topic you find interesting and write a book on it, which is okay in theory. But this was a terrible idea because I was losing authority in each of those niches. So in other words, I would have been better if I just chosen one niche and written multiple books on it. A person who did this strategy was somebody called Steve Scott. And I've uh, he actually uh, I, I uh, have had a series of interaction with him in the past. And the, and the thing is, is that he went for habits. And so every one of his books was written on habits, different aspects of habits. Or what about the uh, Miracle Morning books, right? That was it Hubbard? Uh, I forgot that guy's name, but the uh, the guy who wrote the Miracle Morning, Miracle Morning for Entrepreneurs, Miracle Morning for Authors, Miracle Morning for uh, addic Addicts. I, I know he did one on that I heard recently. And so uh, Elrod, that's it, Hal Elrod. And so the thing is, is that uh, sticking with that same niche or genre or sub, sub, sub genre and just hammering into it, you build expertise. And that is a very important point that I made huge mistakes on when I was first getting started. So the same goes for even a YouTube channel. Imagine if on this channel, the next video you were going to see was on Minecraft. And then after that, it would be on funny animals. And after that, maybe I do it on interior decorating. Can you see a problem here? we would slowly be moving through all of these videos on different topics that are all over the place. And you'd be like, well, I don't really care about interior decorating or gardening, or maybe it's auto 
mechanic work, or maybe I'm telling a short story on the one after that. Now, I might be interested in these topics, but you would not be. There's no reason to subscribe to that channel. They're just going to do it. I saw another entrepreneur who recently did exactly this because they were doing it on, one of them would be making money uh, online and doing copywriting and things like that, which is fine. And then they would do uh, Taekwondo. Now, you you might remember this artist, or not Taekwondo, they were doing, uh, uh, it was a different martial art, Kung Fu, that they were doing. And they were mixing videos between the two of them. And for me, I didn't care about Kung Fu, but I did find enjoyable their comments on entrepreneurship and small businesses. And so you have to sort of get into it and decide, is this really a good idea? What are they functionally doing? Well, I mean, are they a good entrepreneur? Are they good at Kung Fu? Are they trying to say they're good at both? This is a really big problem. It's best to hold to one thing, whether it's a YouTube channel or a series of books that you're going to come out on. And remember, the number one marketing technique when we're trying to get our books out, well, it's in the top 10. I've mentioned this in some of the comments that people have gone back and forth with. The But the number one thing or one of the top ones you're going to want to know is the best way to sell more books is to build an audience of readers who want to read your books. Well, where are you going to find them? The best way to find them is to sell them books. Well, which books? The many books that you're coming out with. Because what we, if you write one book, well, they read it, and then that was the end of that. But if you're writing multiple books, these people are going to come back again and again, and they're going to keep bugging you. Hey, when are you writing the next book? I can't wait to read more of your books because they're so amazing. And this is one of the things that's a little bit difficult. It's the idea of, well, I want the one book I'm going to write to be absolutely flawless. I'm going to use years and years and years to write it. But then... You see where the problem comes on this one, right? So coming out with more books and keeping them within the same niche. And the final point here is since then, I have used a pen name whenever using any additional niches I was going to go into. Also because I'd also don't, I I discovered that there were many books I wanted to have written that I myself personally couldn't write because I wasn't either interested in the subject, but I saw them as profitable niches. And so I had other people write the books and I never put my own, I've never put another name for a book that I didn't write. It's completely acceptable to do that, but I personally, if my name's on it, I wrote the book. And if my name is, uh, if the if somebody else's name is on one of the books that I own, then somebody else wrote it. And so that's just a rule that I generally stick by. And I'll tell you, you'll see it here in, in the three points for today, why. So pen names for authors, pros and cons. So the first thing is, you're going to establish expertise per niche when choosing one at a time, like I mentioned. You want to become an expert at this. The second thing is it's a common practice for authors who've been doing it forever, like Mark Twain and many other authors. These aren't their actual names. I don't think Shakespeare was named Shakespeare. It's probably somebody else. I don't know. But uh, many of these, uh, many, many authors in the past uh, use pen names completely acceptable. There's nothing unethical about it. The, th- the, the disadvantage would be you could be building your brand on yourself. So using a pen name as opposed to your own name would mean you're not really maybe going to be connecting with readers in the same way, like looking them in the eye and this is my face. This is this is what I have to offer. This is my personality. And so we're going to lose a lot of the marketing value of actually connecting with our readers in person. So if you were going to do book signings and then some, suddenly shows up somebody of the opposite gender, you know, to sign the books, this could be a little bit of a challenge for you if you're using pen names here and there and all over the place. And so that's one of the downsides. And our secret point of the day, our third point of the day, it is that it is the only winning strategy if you want to publish in multiple niches. So this isn't even questionable. You want to publish in multiple niches, choose a pen name. But at least make your primary niche, use it with your own name and face so that we can do most of the marketing in there. And then if if we have side interests, well then use a pen name for those. Do not put them under your own name. You can tell your readers if you want that you're using a pen name. I have seen that done. Uh, sometimes just adding a middle initial is uh, is what some people would do. Okay, and uh, and that that's the that's the key secret. The top strategy when using pen names is don't use a pen name for your own personal books if it's possible, as long as they're in the same niche, and then you just switch it. So. Have you used a pen name for your books? I want to know. So write yes below in the comments if you have used a pen name and write no if you've never used a pen name. And check up above me here for more video answers to your self-publishing questions. Thanks.